CNN, 28th of March 2024, China lifted sanctions against Australian wine, which had been in place for over three catastrophic years. China has recently declared the removal of severe tariffs it had imposed on Australian wineries for over three years. These penalties severely impacted the Australian wine industry and were a significant source of contention between the two trading nations. In light of changes in China's wine market conditions, the Chinese Ministry of Commerce announced on Thursday that anti-dumping duties and countervailing duties on imported wines originating from Australia are no longer necessary. Two days before the conclusion of a five-month review period mutually agreed upon by Canberra and Beijing, Australia withdrew a dispute from the World Trade Organization. The measure above is scheduled to be implemented on Friday. The decision eliminates duties on Australian wine exports to China previously valued at over 1 billion Australian dollars, 653 million dollars, down to as much as 218 percent. The Australian government approved Beijing's decision, stating it occupies a pivotal moment for the Australian wine industry. As of 2020, the imposition of duties by China on Australian wine rendered the export of bottled wine to that market economically unviable for Australian producers, the statement continued. We express our gratitude and recognition to Australian wine producers and grape growers for their resilience and assistance throughout adversity. The implementation of wine tariffs was among a series of trade restrictions Beijing imposed on significant Australian exports beginning in 2020 in retaliation for political grievances. Amid a thaw in relations between China and Australia, Chinese authorities have progressively lifted a number of these restrictions, including those on coal, timber, and barley. Winemakers' Choice of Crostini The nation's severely impacted winemakers applauded Beijing's action. They have been contending with an oversupply due to waning global demand and years of substantial revenue losses from China. Bruce Tyrrell, who operates Tyrrell's Wines as Managing Director in New South Wales, told CNN that many individuals in the Australian wine industry will be reaching for a fine glass of wine tonight feeling considerably more optimistic about their futures. He said the industry has suffered significant damage and uncertainty as a result of China's absence over the past three years. The future of the Chinese market following the COVID-19 pandemic is unknown, but having access to it is far preferable to not having it at all. The Chinese Ministry of Commerce initially implemented up to 212% tariffs in November 2020. The following March, a final ruling established anti-dumping and countervailing duties ranging from 116% to 218% over five years. According to National Industry Group Wine Australia, the wine duties had a severe impact on a key Australian industry, with sales to China falling 97% in 2021 compared to the previous year, or by nearly 1 billion Australian dollars in value and 90 million litres in volume. Value-wise, international exports decreased by 30% during the same period. In 2022-2023, annual wine production will be at its lowest level in over 15 years, according to Wine Australia. The United Kingdom and the United States became the nation's most valuable export markets in the same year. The director of the National Association of Grape and Wine Producers in Australia, Australian Grape and Wine, Lee McLean, stated that industry groups and the government collaborated to ensure a coordinated re-entry into the market. McLean stated, We eagerly anticipate the return of Australian wines to Chinese dining tables and the revitalization of our relationships with customers and business partners in that market. However, he further stated that we will continue prioritizing expanding our export presence and bolstering domestic demand in Australia. An official cooling China implemented the trade controls, including the wine tariffs, in response to a deterioration in bilateral relations concerning foreign investment and national security concerns. The situation further declined in 2020 after Australia demanded an international investigation into the source of the COVID-19 pandemic in China. In 2020, China's foreign ministry accused Australia of violating the fundamental norms governing international relations regarding trade disputes. However, Australia's Commerce Ministry has attributed the raft of restrictions to anti-dumping and other factors. The re-establishment of diplomatic relations commenced after the election of Anthony Alban as his Labour government in May 2022, however, the wine tariffs continued to be a contentious issue. On Thursday, the Chinese Foreign Ministry stated that the two nations had appropriately addressed each other's concerns through dialogue and negotiations, and jointly pushed for the momentum to improve bilateral relations for a considerable period of time. 
Amidst a series of severe economic challenges, Beijing has endeavored to stabilize its relations with key trading partners from Europe to Australia before making this decision. It also follows diplomatic efforts between the two countries to mend relations, culminating in Albanese's November visit to China, the first time an Australian leader visited the country in seven years. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi embarked on the inaugural visit to Australia during the same period earlier this month. Amid the visit above, Australian Foreign Minister Penny Wong brought up persistent issues of tension between the two nations, such as China's execution last month of Yang Hengjin, an Australian national detained in China since 2019 and an incarcerated writer and advocate for democracy. In addition, Wang emphasized Canberra's desire to eliminate remaining beef and crustacean restrictions, 